young son of a Ukrainian immigrant began his life's journey in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Roy John Romano grew up on Avenue J. He fondly remembers a warm, loving family and nurturing community where small things were great pleasures. I remember uh, going to the Roxy Theater on a 20th Street Saturday, watching all the Roy Rogers and other, I won't date to myself too much, westerns. I remember uh, even crossing the railway tracks, which were right in the heart of the uh, city at the time um, before the Midtown Plaza was set up. And uh, the trains would come underneath the walk over steam engine trains. I guess that is dating myself and the ash and all of that. The excitement of Roy Rogers and Saturday afternoon westerns gave way to the allure of the media and live radio. It all began one day when he did a broadcast out of Westmount Elementary School for an exchange teacher from Nashville, Tennessee. Play by play of a hockey game off the top of his head. So CKLM came around to sort of uh, air this oddity of this grade seven kid doing this broadcast for the Nashville, Tennessee uh, teacher. I was very excited by the prospect. What I found was that I had a bit of an accent, a Ukrainian accent, because my first language was Ukrainian. And uh, I thought that maybe here a new career was opening up for me in radio at that time. I wasn't even thinking television. And when I was told that I had a thick accent, as if I was a, a showstopper by the CKLM people, but they were very kind. And they said, here, you work the accent through. I spent hours and hours and hours uh, in front of a tape recorder reading uh, old newscasts just in order to, to, to get rid of it. That perseverance paid off with a full-time job and some much needed money through high school and university. Those engineers, you know, you can't rely on them in any event. The guys who were trying to clip my hair at the time were the engineering president, the students president and his uh, cadre and I was fending it off as men's arts and science uh, president. His time at the University of Saskatchewan was very enjoyable. Studies were the focus, but there was also time for a little fun. If you really thought of yourself as a University of Saskatchewan grad, you really were a U of S uh, person. Uh, I ended up being president of the entire Students' Council at one point, and for that year, it didn't matter where you went, you were cheering the Huskies all the time. Uh, you were a University of Saskatchewan st student. <laughs> While university gave him the tools to forge a career, Roy Romano's parents instilled in him the tools to build a better person. Love of Canada, um, love of community, respect for your background, respect for other people's backgrounds, toughness. My mother came over with uh, my sister Anne, just the two of them. Uh, they hadn't seen father for a few years. We'd been here already trying to make things a little easier for their arrival. Can you imagine getting on a ship and going for two weeks to a country that you don't know anything about, you don't know the language, and you're, I mean, talk about tough, independent people and women, that was my mother. And when dad died prematurely at uh, 61 years of age and they needed money, and I worked at CKLM for the money, thank goodness they were there to help. Mother at her age went and worked and cleaned washrooms, and cleaned classrooms, nothing wrong with that work. It's noble work, it's good work, it's honest work. Tough tough person. So I think all of those uh, attributes of being able to build on uh, uh, and to, to dream of leaving behind you a little better society, which is what they fundamentally did for me. Those lessons from his mother and father served Roy Romano well through law school, his initial foray into politics, and in 1970, his bid to become leader of the New Democratic Party of Saskatchewan. It was a bit uh, presumptuous, quite a bit presumptuous on my part to, to even challenge Al Blakeney. I don't know what possessed me. Actually, I do know what possessed me. It was uh, friends and colleagues who were of the crowd of 1967 who said, get in and give it a try. He did give it a try, and it was close. But in the end, the more seasoned Alan Blakeney won the leadership 
and went on to defeat the liberal Thatcher government. Roy Romano's time would come, though. In 1987, when Alan Blakeney stepped down, Roy Romano went unchallenged to become leader of the New Democrats. Four years later, and the ultimate prize, the young Ukrainian boy from Saskatoon became Premier of Saskatchewan. I want to say to you, my friends, as a result of tonight's election, let the word go forth from every corner of our province tonight that Saskatchewan is back. The people have entrusted us with a great responsibility to rebuild and to renew. His climb up the political mountain was now complete. Roy Romano would go on to win the Premier's chair two more times. His five-decade, 34-year career in politics was filled with passion, hope, despair, and above all, a commitment to serve the people of Saskatchewan in the best way he could. We didn't do too badly at all. I'm very encouraged with the turnout uh, and the support for the CCF, both in Riversdale and in the province. I feel that unemployment being at its highest level in the history of Saskatchewan in recent years is a number one issue. The number of unemployed, the number who have left the province of Saskatchewan, there's a need to get this province back on its feet again, standing economically strong and viable, and I think that's an issue. I think it'll be a very um, a difficult problem because the province is in such a mess, but I think we can do it. Premier Thatcher has said that NDP policies would cost the taxpayers one and a quarter billion dollars. Do you agree with that? No. <laughs> I, I don't know how the Premier arrives at his figure, but... First Minister conferences and say to the Prime Minister of Canada, this is a confederation bargain and our very livelihood is at stake and by golly we want you to help us to come to save rural Saskatchewan. Now is the time for us to join and to work to defeat Divine and Mulroney at the earliest opportunity and build to our greatness that we can. And the challenge ahead is for us to show Canada and to show the world that our values of community and compassion and sharing that our values of hard work and thrift and economy, that our spirit can once again make this province the best place in all of Canada and the world in which to live. And we'll do it. We'll do it. pioneers led the way. They gave us the life that we have. And I ask you, are we going to let them down and let their memories down? My first words of thanks, of course, must be to my wife, Eleanor, whose support and guidance and unwavering faith whose support, guidance, and unwavering faith has carried me through some good times and some bad times. And 
harmonized when you and Mr. Devine were seeking to I didn't, I don't know Mr. Devine. You don't know Mr. Devine? No, I don't know Mr. Devine. Uh, but everybody who worked for Mr. Devine works for you and you don't know Mr. Devine. The reality is 6% is our cut on PST. Our income taxes are cut. We have targeted the tax cuts on a regular ongoing basis and our plan adds up and your $1.8 billion in expenditures doesn't add up, not counting the ones that you announced during the election campaign. Roy Romano built a reputation as an intensely passionate leader, not afraid of a fiery debate. But he also has a quieter, more reflective side. Among his many loves is a fondness of music, classical, jazz, blues, the Rolling Stones. Country music has a special place in his heart. A lyric from an old Hank Williams Sr. song strikes a particular chord. A picture from the past came slowly stealing as I brushed your arm and walked so close to you. Then suddenly, I got that old-time feeling. I can't help it if I'm still in love with you. And it's a beautiful piece of poetry and writing, uh, talking about lost love, talking about uh, something which uh, the singer describes as uh, uh, a memory which will never leave. And um, I think that, in large measure, represents all of us in life. We all have experiences in work, in dealing with other people, personal relationships, which sometimes come to an end. And uh, there's a sorrow about all of this. Now, uh, my term as a leader and premier is uh, at an end. Uh, I am very happy that I was able to serve, but I think in some ways that song probably evokes uh, a kind of sadness in me as well. It's uh, the uh, beginning of one season, which is full of prospect and hope and joy, and uh, so the conclusion of another season, which was filled with happiness and joy, and uh, I'm uh, very good. Another turning point of fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. There's just no use me looking back anymore. I've, I've made my decision. Faces and photographs, a million travel miles. Remember victory. The cheers, the tears, the smiles Filling up your memory with battles won and lost Knowing you did what's right no matter what the cost Keep the flame inside your heart and don't give up the fight I hope you had the time of your life Without her support it would be very difficult and not impossible to do what I've done The commuting So, I'm not going to say goodbye, I'll say a temporary adieu, and uh, I guess we'll see you when we see you. It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right, I hope you had the time of your life. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you very much. God bless you. It's something unpredictable, and in the end it's right, I 